Or there must be something on. It's Monsters, our favorite show. Shh, it's starting. Someone, Mrs. Ethel Coomer, is missing for six days. Are you her boy? My name is Bateman. I'm a private investigator. Well, that's Miss Coomer. She's staying here? Well, you've been reading the register. You ought to know. She left Tuesday morning. Did she say where she was headed? Not to me. I hear that visitors around these woods have been disappearing like donuts at a fat folks convention. Yet the monsters, I suppose, are carried off by flying saucers. I've seen the stories in those newspapers. What they won't say to make a dollar. They say nobody disappears. No, I didn't say that. This swampland, this wilderness up here, marsh can be a tricky thing, especially for those who don't know a sump pit from a swimming pool. And personally, you have not seen anything weird out there. No UFOs, barring Mrs. Coomer here. And if I had, I wouldn't be fool enough to say so. Business is pretty poor as it is. Now, if you're through, I'll take a room. I don't think I can. You only got one couple registered. Suit yourself. Room two, top of the stairs. Mr. Howlett, my husband would like a pot of tea in our room, please. Right away. Miss Stanton. Hi. Hello. Some blackberry sludge with your tea. How about some gooseberry? Actually, the preserves are quite good. What do you think? Pickled pig's feet from hell? <laughs> I don't think I want to know. Are you here on uh, business? Vacation. Funny, somehow I can't see you in hiking boots and a poncho. What do you see me in? Not too much. Something gauzy, high heels, kicking your legs up on stage in Vegas. <laughs> Actually, I was a dancer before I met George. George being the husband. Mm. This trip was his idea. Ever since the heart attack, he needs all the rest he can get. And he's always loved this place. The unspoiled swamp. An invalid, huh? Oh, poor George. He hasn't been much good for anything lately. Anne! Where's that damn tea? Except making my life a nightmare. <sighs> I'll get that. I'll be seeing you. I'm sure you will. Put that down! What ain't your property? Jack. Would you like a drink? <laughs> no, thanks. I don't drink. It makes me feel sorry for myself. What's a girl like you have to be sorry about? The wrong turn I took somewhere along the line. Let's just say I'm not happy with my career choice. You look like you're well paid. I bet you give good uh, 
value. I should slap your face. But you won't. No. Because you're right, Jack. I've been bought and paid for. George is a lot older than me. A lot richer. And probably smarter. I was just a kid when I met him. And I thought... Well... I stick around. People change careers. Maybe I could be a private investigator. That's all your business card. Maybe you could. If you're interested, I could give you some pointers. I'm a very willing student. I should have known. George! Ah, oh, sit down. George Stamos. Jack Bateman. I get a shot of that? You don't mind? No, help yourself. George, you're not supposed to drink. Can it? You're not my mother. You don't cook bad enough to be my mother. <laughs> George, your pills. <laughs> oh, George. Oh. What do you want? To thank you. to do now. Rest for the weary. Commercial carding. It's like anything else in life. You stick it to them before they stick it to you. George, I'm going upstairs. Yeah, Don't yeah. be long. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Bateman. Tracks a man like a dead cat that tracks flies. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but the woman just saved your life. She saved her credit cards, her Porsche. Look, Bateman, if I die, she's cut off like that. It all goes to my sister. Bye bye, goose. Bye bye, golden eggs. You married? Nope. Smart. Bateman, I'll let you know a little secret. We get back to New York, dumping her. She's history. Drags me up to this place, God knows why. <laughs> but it won't work. She dragged you, huh? I'm supposed to be taking it easy. You know what that means to me? Atlantic City, 24-hour room service. Look at this dump. Hey. Can't even get a drink around here. You, uh, stayed here before? Are you kidding? I bet you that old bird has a drink behind the desk here. Probably locks it up. <laughs> Mr. Stamart. Looking for something back there? Yeah, where can I get it? Three. Yeah. Harder! Oh. Put it out my tab. He probably will anyway. Yeah. So there, I'm relieved this didn't break, young fella. 
That's not my special pickles. <laughs> great favorite, these parts. <laughs> Were they a uh, favorite of Mrs. Coomer? Why don't you take this batch? See for yourself. A gift. Oh, let's just say investment. Oh, take it with you. <laughs> Be careful now. <laughs> Stains. I'll be careful. <laughs> Whatever you were expecting, he ain't coming. You're drunk. George, you really should eat something. You hardly touched your dinner. Yeah, well, your concern is very touching. Why is it I feel you're after something? What's it this time? Jewelry. Your sable, it's the wrong color. George, let's level with each other. I know I haven't been the best wife in the world, and you have every reason not to trust me. But George, you're not the easiest man to live with. We've both hurt each other, and I'm sorry. What I want is to make it work, to start fresh, you and me. It's not too late, and I'm willing if you are. And I promise you, George, from this night on, you'll never have to mistrust me again. You're so <laughs> piece of work. <laughs> you must be starving, darling. <laughs> What's this? The last song. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. And here's some of Hallett's special pickles. <clears throat> I could just get them open. Yeah, give it here. Mm. You're extra sour, George, just the way you like them. Go ahead, honey. Pop them open. <laughs> Scream. What? You screamed. It, it was an owl, didn't you hear it? I didn't hear an owl. I heard a woman scream. Are you all right? I, yes, I, I'm fine. I, I just thought I saw something out the window. Jeez, what have you been doing in here? Setting a mattress on fire? No, I need help for that. With the husband. George, he went out for a walk. With Mrs. Coomer? What? Forget it. Funny, I didn't see him leave, and I was sitting downstairs the whole time. What are you doing? Mr. Bateman, I don't know where my husband is, and I couldn't care less. If he means so much to you, why don't you go look for him? But in the meantime, I'm going to sleep, and I don't require your assistance. What a coincidence. I was going to bed myself, and now I won't be able to sleep. It doesn't add up. The setup here, I can't figure it, and that bothers me. I can't go to sleep at night when things don't add up. Try counting sheep. I hear that's simple. Now, if you don't mind... You did it, didn't you? Did what? You offed him all, George. He was here, sitting right here in this chair. Get out. And he opened a jar of Howlett's pickles, a gift from his loving wife. Oh. So where are the pickles? Where is the body? You see what I mean? Things don't add up. You're crazy. If you don't get out now, I'm calling the police. What is he putting these things? Some kind of poison? You're insane. A lunatic. My husband went out for a stroll. Without his and clothes? And you force your way in here with some wild, paranoid fantasy about... Wait a minute. A second ago, you came on to me. You knew he wasn't coming back tonight. Let go of me. You bastard, I'll kill you! Oh, really? <gasps> like you kill him? <gasps> How? With this? Oh. Let's open it, shall we? Get a taste of what's inside. No, God, no, please! Come on, Ed, just a whiff. It's not going to kill you. Yes, yes, it will. You're right. It is the jar. There's this thing inside, some kind of monster. I gave it to him, but I didn't know it. I swear. I, I thought it was preserved, and then this thing flew out, and God, it was horrible. <gasps> oh, you're a good, Angel. You're real good. You should go to hell with an Oscar. All right. I killed him. I planned it. I did it, and I'm glad. Are you satisfied?
he was a monster. The things he did to me. I hated him. I hated him and he knew it. But I couldn't leave him. I was too afraid. He swore to me that if I ever tried to leave him, he would do things to me so that no other man would ever want me. And I do need a man. A real man. So much. If you knew when I saw you how much I wanted you. You don't blame me, do you? About George? I didn't have any choice. Say you believe me, Jack. Sure, I believe you. You must have hated him quite a bit to have cut yourself out of the money this way. I'm free. That's all that matters. As long as you didn't get caught. By the way, where's the body? There is no body. That thing in the jar is some kind of monster. It grows out there in the dark and deep pools in the swamp. Light drives it crazy. If you open the jar in the light, it, it attacks and just latches onto the nearest person and uses them up. Afterwards, there's nothing. No murder victim, no murder weapon. No murder. Very clever, Anne. I could love a woman like you. What do you mean? As long as no body turns up, the husband isn't dead, he's just missing. It'll take his sister seven years to have him declared legally dead. Seven years before she can get her hands on the estate. I'll bet there won't be too much left. How much are we talking about? Twelve million, more or less. It's a lot of money, Jack. I don't know how I'll manage it all, actually. I'm not too smart when it comes to business. I guess I'll need someone with a good head on his shoulders to help me out. Someone I could trust. You ready? I'll be down in a minute. Don't look so surprised. Can I get a bag for this? You taking it with? You never know when it might come in handy. Huh. How much do you charge for these things? Three hundred dollars. Mind you, shipping is extra. Nice to know that there's no places you can get a bargain. Mr. Hallett, my husband went for a walk early this morning and may be gone all day. In the meantime, I have to go back to the city unexpectedly, and Mr. Bateman has kindly offered me a ride. I understand. I understand. Huh? 
Anyone inquires, that's what I'll tell them. My pleasure. Enjoy your pickles. 